I am, you know, it's funny. We talk about Tesla now in increments of 420. A couple of weeks ago, it was three times 420, the stock. Now it's closer to four times 420. I assume you're in agreement that it is separated. The price has separated itself from whatever fundamentals we have to work with. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the valuation of the company has no basis in you know traditional valuation metrics, but but I do think investors are are looking at a couple of things. I think they're looking at the growth trajectory of the company. You know, it's added the Shanghai plant, the European plant is being added. Uh, at the same time, they're looking at the competition and folks like VW, who's launching a, an important crossover in Europe, is having a lot of problems with the software management of that. Uh, they're also looking at the new products that are coming are all incremental. Um, interestingly, even in this down in, in, in economy, uh, countries or, or continents like Europe and countries like China have not moved off their CO2 uh, regulatory requirements. So that's going to further uh, you know, grow electrification. And, and I think there's two other things that investors are looking at. One is just the software expertise that Tesla has in managing the batteries, because as you think about the innovations around electrification and even autonomous vehicles, uh, it doesn't depend so much on mechanical ingenuity. It depends on software expertise, quality, execution, and integration, which uh, Tesla has. And finally, I think Tesla's doing a lot of innovation in batteries. Uh, some traditional OEMs may be viewing batteries as a commodity they can purchase from uh, from others, but Tesla is doing a lot of innovation, and we'll see what they come up with in their in their battery days. So I think for all those factors, uh, there's a there's a lot of expectation for the valuation. Right, right. I wonder if you think. I mean, everyone tries to read Elon's mind, but the degree to which he worked his staff so hard to get open, stay open, get capacity, get supply out in the quarter. Do you think that all was driven by a desire to be in the S&P? Well, I think it was, a, a first and foremost, a desire to show consistent profitability, because that's been the big knock against the company, is can they profitably grow consistently? And if you look at this second quarter, uh, you know, he took very aggressive actions in the quarter. He cut salaries, he furloughed staff, he demanded uh, rent reductions for his sales locations. He even pre-announced increases in some of their features, like uh, uh, their, their, their autonomous uh, pilot, uh, autonomy, uh, co-pilot, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, that particular feature that they have on the vehicles. And he announced a $1,000 increase on that effective July 1st. So he was looking to improve the mix for the quarter. And at the same token, if you recall, he took a very aggressive action against California and the local counties to get his plants open back in May. And listen, in the long term, if your plant is down a week or two weeks, it's no big deal. But if it's down just one day and a quarter, that is a big deal for the quarter. So I think for all those reasons, he was pushing for profitability. And there's probably one factor that also as well, as you mentioned, you know, would be a, a feather in his cap to be in, included in the S&P 500. Uh, yeah, Mark, Julia Borston here. Uh, it's interesting how much that inclusion in the S&P 500 could drive demand uh, for Tesla stock. You know, the stock's already up 279 percent year to date. I have to ask, with all of this in mind, there are going to be other EV models that are hitting the market, especially in the next year. Do you see any of these other players really posing a real threat to Tesla? Well, I think you have to put it into perspective. For the most part, Tesla has had the market to themselves, you know, for the past five years. Now they're going to have competition. And uh, so just at, it, at its highest level, it's going to get tougher to, for Tesla. But when you look at some of the products coming out from the established OEMs, uh, they're, they're very good products. The question is, uh, can they master the quality in those products, particularly around the, the software? And, you know, the knock against Tesla was they didn't know how to, uh, you know, manufacture a vehicle. And they're learning. You know, they still have a long way to go, but they're learning. But what they do have mastery of is how you manage uh, the software systems in an electrified vehicle and the thermal management and all the technical aspects. Those are the things that the established OEMs are growing. So as they launch their vehicles, the good news for them is they're going to have competition for Tesla now, but they're going to have to master that quality coming out of the gate. Uh, to prove to customers that they can compete effectively with Tesla.